Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in a few hours, Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather are going to step on the scales. And I believe the world is going to be in for a shock. A few days ago, Alex Arisa, who has worked in both camps, in an interview made the comment that Pacquiao's face looked drawn. In his opinion, that meant that Pacquiao had overtrained. Now we're getting word that Pacquiao is already several pounds under the 147 pound weight limit, right? I think Manny Pacquiao is going to try to come into this fight light. Let's remember, Pacquiao fought Chris Algieri at a catch weight of 143.5 pounds. Pacquiao's camp understands that Mayweather lately has made a cottage industry out of beating men who on fight night were much heavier than him. Right, Pacquiao's people also know that Manny Pacquiao hasn't had a stoppage in several years. He hasn't knocked anyone out. He's knocked guys down. He hasn't been able to finish them since the Miguel Cotto fight. So I believe the weigh-in is going to be the entry point to Manny Pacquiao's strategy which will be to beat Floyd Mayweather on volume. Right? I don't believe he's going to try to knock out Floyd Mayweather. I believe he understands, or at least he thinks he understands, that he needs to throw more punches than Floyd Mayweather and dart around the ring. I don't believe Pacquiao is going to set up shop or try to set up shop in the pocket I don't believe that's who he is, right? Pacquiao's not the kind of fighter who comes inside and leans on you. He's also not the kind of fighter who comes inside and initiates clinches, like, let's say, a Vladimir Klitschko. So I believe he's going to try to turn back the clock. He's going to try to come in, move, throw a lot of punches. Have an in and out game plan. The idea is to come in knowing that he has the crowd already on his side. And then to throw a lot of volume to keep it that way. Right? Have people thinking, hey, Mayweather needs to do something big here. Right? Have Mayweather on his back foot trying to deal with a lot of volume. Now, the problem with that strategy and why I still believe Mayweather wins this fight, right? The problem with that strategy is that Manny Pacquiao is in his mid-30s, right? His style hasn't aged well. Don't take my opinion. Look at the CompuBox numbers. Younger Manny Pacquiao used to throw over 800 punches a fight. Over 800 punches a fight. Understand, since Alex Ariza left his camp, Manny Pacquiao has been throwing less than 700 punches a fight. In other words, the volume has dampened. The stamina has dampened. Father Time eventually catches up to all of us. Manny's high volume game was really a young man's game, wasn't it? Who in their mid to late 30s in boxing today throws high volume effectively? You're not going to find too many guys in their mid to late 30s, especially after the devastating knockout Pacquiao suffered at the hands of one Manuel Marquez, who come in the ring throwing big volume. Let's go one step further. Mayweather's style dampens volume. Fighters typically against Mayweather throw fewer punches than they 
dead before they fought Mayweather. Isn't that what happened to Pacquiao? Against the sharp counterpuncher in Juan Manuel Marquez. Weren't you amazed? In the third fight in Texas at how Pacquiao's volume seemed to be subdued. How Pacquiao himself seemed to be subdued. And you understand why. Because volume opens you up for counters. Right? If I jump in and I'm throwing punches and then I get hit with some hard punches back, maybe next time I don't throw as many punches. Maybe next time when I jump in, I'm thinking of my opponent's right hand. I might come in and I might actually have a hand committed to defense. That by itself would lower my punch volume. But let's go one step further here. Since Mayweather is going to be the bigger man in the ring, there's a chance on fight night that Mayweather outweighs Pacquiao by four or five pounds. As it is, Mayweather's physically bigger than Pacquiao. Right? There's the possibility, folks, and this might be the biggest surprise of the fight, that Mayweather, who himself hasn't shown a lot of power at 147, Right? Let's be clear here. The Victor Ortiz knockout is cloudy, isn't it? Doesn't that involve a mistake by referee Joe Cortez, who was looking outside the ring himself when Victor Ortiz gets dropped? Right? The big surprise in this fight might be that Floyd Mayweather himself is going to go for a knockout. This is a career-defining fight. You're only undefeated for so long, right? Mayweather is going to come in and Mayweather is going to feel that this is the fight against the guy he considers to be his arch rival in the history books during his era. Only Mayweather is coming in with the idea that this guy didn't do it the right way. I don't believe anything in the sport gets Mayweather more upset than guys who he feels have cut corners. Now maybe Pacquiao has, maybe he hasn't. I'm not here to, you know, make any definitive statement on it. But let's just say if anyone would know, it would be the guy who currently employs Pacquiao's former strength coach. Right? Understand Mayweather was the one years ago who insisted on drug testing at a time when that wasn't standard protocol in championship fights. I think Mayweather views Pacquiao as a junior welterweight, not a welterweight. I think Mayweather himself knows that he had an opportunity to knock out guys in fights, notably Miguel Cotto, in the later rounds of that fight when Mayweather's landing a right hand. And Mayweather knows he pulled the punch because his hands are tender and because he respected Miguel Cotto. I don't think Mayweather has the same level of respect for Manny Pacquiao. I'll even go further. I think Mayweather is planning such an explosive performance that he hasn't even been his usual self in the pre-fight activities in terms of aggressively criticizing his opponent. <coughs> the Pacquiao people have been trying desperately to have some kind of contentious back and forth take place, they've been saying a lot of explosive lies. Mayweather's legs are gone. Mayweather didn't want this fight. Right? Mayweather was forced into the fight. Mayweather's been a shot fighter for years. Right? Freddie Roach has said things at times. Bob Arum has said things at times. Mayweather hasn't even been animated at the pre-fight press conferences. 
I believe that's because Mayweather has a surprise for all of us. Pauli Malinaji believes that Mayweather has a very good chance at a KO in this fight. I'm going to agree with him, and I believe that's going to be readily apparent when you see the man at the weigh-in today. Pacquiao is hoping to win on the scorecards with volume. I believe Mayweather is hoping to knock Pacquiao down at least a few times in this fight. I made a video a while back, and I talked about how this fight could descend into Mayweather Arturo Gatti. That's the fight I want you to watch before you watch this one. I think Floyd Mayweather fully expects to be dominant like he was in the Gotti fight. As Mayweather himself has said in an interview, every time an opponent comes in and thinks they can come up to me and throw a lot of punches, every one of those guys has failed. Right? I believe his line is, 47 men have tried, 47 men have failed, right? What Pacquiao's going to do, in my opinion, at least from Mayweather's perspective, is neither novel nor clever. More importantly, I think Mayweather's going to be on his front foot after the first round and a half, because I think Mayweather understands that he can't leave it in the hands of the judges, right? I'm expecting Mayweather to go for the knockout. I'm expecting Pacquiao to be unable to hurt Mayweather. Pacquiao might be able to get some flash knockdowns if he's lucky. That's going to be a different kind of knockdown than the knockdowns, let's say, a guy like Vladimir Klitschko gets, where when you hit the canvas, you're hurt on the canvas. Why is it in Manny Pacquiao fights that so many guys are able to get off the canvas and continue fighting, even when they're as outgunned as Chris Algieri was in the last fight? So, the big surprise in this fight, in my opinion, is going to be Floyd Mayweather on his front foot by the third round. I don't think the two guys like each other. I believe Pacquiao feels that Mayweather is not a nice person, an arrogant SOB who has a checkered domestic violence past, a guy who's bad for the sport because of his personality. But I believe Mayweather's equally offended. Mayweather views Pacquiao as a guy who's cut corners. A guy who's beaten legitimate fighters, fighters Mayweather considers to be legitimate, like Miguel Cotto, right, through, we'll just call it cutting corners, right? I think Mayweather feels that Pacquiao's not real, right? That Pacquiao's success is the result of him cutting corners. So I think you have two guys here on an explosive crash course, right? There's going to be a collision here. And I think both guys are going to show more emotion than they normally show. I believe the end result is going to be Manny Pacquiao getting battered, possibly knocked out. Understand, in many ways. <clears throat> Juan Manuel Marquez, a sharp counterpuncher, is like Floyd Mayweather, right? Both guys like to hit you when you're on the way in, right? Both guys set traps for you, right? Both guys rely on technical skills, not physical dominance. I know Mayweather has hand speed and stuff like that, but he's a technician. He's thought about the angles, right? He's in there doing math, right? Floyd Mayweather has had four films of Juan Manuel Marquez really beating Manny Pacquiao. I understand the world believes and the official results are that Manny Pacquiao 
beat Marquez twice. Let's remember the first fight's a draw officially. I'm telling you that there are many who believe Marquez should have had his hand raised at the end of all of those fights. Can we agree Marquez was successful for stretches of those four fights? Mayweather has the clear blueprint on how to dampen Manny Pacquiao. Right? It's clear. Right? Marquez, not surprisingly, is taking Mayweather in this fight. Marquez understands there is a path to neutralizing Manny Pacquiao's big left hand. Right? I heard Shane Mosley in an interview. And Mosley's leaning Mayweather. I heard Shane Mosley in an interview say that Manny Pacquiao does have a right hand. Shane Mosley would know far more than I would. Because Mosley's been in the ring with him. Right? I understand that Pacquiao drops Ricky Hatton with a right hand. I believe that right hand is only effective up close. I don't believe Mayweather is going to allow Manny Pacquiao to linger in the pocket. So Pacquiao is going to try to win with speed. I believe Mayweather is going to try to win with power. I like Mayweather in this fight. I believe Mayweather is going to leave little doubt. Right? It's either going to be a dominant performance where by the end of the fight, we're talking about Mayweather remaining unbeaten. Or it's going to be a stoppage where Mayweather comes out, makes Pacquiao look extremely limited. Makes Pacquiao look like he's just a long left hand, right? Has Pacquiao jump inside and is set up to hit him on the way in. You're going to see Mayweather leaning back. You're going to see Mayweather with an obstacle between him and Pacquiao straight left. And you're going to see Mayweather loading up with either a left hook or a straight right hand. I like Floyd Mayweather in this fight. I believe the tip-off is going to be at the way in. I'm expecting Manny Pacquiao to come in lighter than Mayweather. Mayweather is going to be around 147. I believe Pacquiao is going to try to come in at 144 or 143-ish. Right? That's going to let you know that Manny Pacquiao is coming in here to flash a lot of speed and a lot of volume. In my opinion, that doesn't work against Floyd Mayweather, right? You have to ask yourself what has worked against Floyd Mayweather. I would say if you look at the first Castillo fight, you'll see a guy who did better than Mayweather on the CompuBox numbers, who came inside and who worked a lot of hooks to Mayweather's body. Right? I don't believe that style would beat Mayweather today. I believe Mayweather has adjusted his game. But I believe that style has a greater chance of success against Mayweather than a guy actually trying to do a ambush type of attack where he comes in and he tries to flash a lot of volume. Right? To win rounds with the judges. So I like Mayweather here. We'll see what happens. Let's enjoy the weigh-in. After all, if you attend it, you'll be paying for it, right? Let's enjoy the weigh-in. Let's enjoy the fight, right? Just understand it's going to be explosive, right? These guys are all smiles for the cameras. They don't like each other for personal reasons, right? This is oil and water, folks. Something's going to happen here. My prediction is Mayweather dominates. We'll find out in, oh, a day or so. Good luck. Thanks for stopping by. Let me get your final take on the fight. Leave it here in the comment section to this video. If I've said something in this video that you take exception with, or if there's a dynamic in this fight <clears throat> that you feel needs to be addressed, 
I hope you do it here. Let's take advantage of the format here on YouTube. We can be interactive, right? I want you to feel free to leave your comments. I want other viewers to feel free to comment on whatever comments are left by others. Let's try to get an edge on the casino. Let me leave you with this. I was listening to a great podcast. It's a podcast on ESPN. Uh, I forget the name of it now. Chad Millman is the moderator. It's a gambling podcast. And he had Bob Scucci, who is the head honcho at the Orleans Sportsbook in Las Vegas on the show. Right now on the show, they use certain terms. <clears throat> they talk about casual bettors. They talk about what they call smart money. And smart money people are the repeat gamblers, right, who come in and who typically bet more than the casual gambler, right? Now, the casual gambler is the person who is trying to more than double their money, right? They see odds of, let's say, a plus 170 and a plus 180, and they want to bet a little to win a lot. The smart money thinks a little bit differently. Right? They're looking to get, let's say, 30 or 40 percent on their money. Right? They'd like to get more, but they're looking for things that are actually going to happen. Right? The odds matter to them, but the odds is not going to impact what they think is going to actually happen in the fight. Now, Bob Scucci on the show, it's this week's show, Behind the Bets is the name of the podcast. Bob Scucci on the show says that there are a lot of little bets on Manny Pacquiao, right? The betting is running even at Floyd being a minus 200, right? Bet 200 to win 100 on Floyd. On Manny, it's bet 100 to win $170, right? Scucci then points out that the smart money is on Floyd Mayweather. He further admits that he's received a $50,000 bet and that a few smart money bettors have tipped him off to the fact that they want to make bigger bets than that on the fight and are working with the casino, have tipped the casino to the fact that they're going to come in at the last minute because they're expecting the odds to be in their favor at the last minute because of the money that's being bet on Manny Pacquiao. In sum, right, the professional bettors, the smart money, is on the favorite here, Floyd Mayweather. Right, Mayweather isn't getting the casual fan money. He's getting the professional better money. So, different show. The Thundering Herd with Colin Cowherd. Cowherd had one of his more intriguing guests from time to time on the show this week, Sal Palantonio. Now, Sal Palantonio is from a town that knows about sports betting, Philadelphia, right? Sal has a group of friends. He calls them Fat Tony and them, right? Well, Cowherd openly says, hey, Fat Tony and them, who do they like in this fight? And Palantonio says, oh, they're all over Floyd Mayweather. Right? I'm telling you that the smart money understands this fight is an optical illusion. Right? The public sees evenly matched fighters. The smart money sees one guy who's been fighting at a lot of catch weights, whose last fight was at a catch weight, 143.5. And another guy who's unbeaten. Right? Who's the physically bigger man? Who, quite frankly, is competitive on hand speed, but uses his hand speed from a defensive stance rather than as a lead, more as a counter. Right? So just understand you have a lot of people, a lot of smart money guys prepared to make big money bets at the last minute here on Floyd Mayweather, right? Janady Golovkin's trainer, 
Abel Sanchez has a provocative take on this fight. Right, I'm talking about one of the best trainers in the sport of boxing. I'm talking about Mike Perez's former trainer. Understand, Golovkin is only one of the fighters Abel Sanchez has been involved with. Abel Sanchez used to be the trainer for Terrible Terry Norris, who, of course, beat Sugar Ray Leonard. Right? Abel Sanchez believes that a few years ago this fight was a complete mismatch. Right? He believes that Floyd Mayweather would have beaten Manny Pacquiao more easily years ago than now. Right? Think about it. Conventional wisdom's the opposite. Right? I just told you in the first part of this video that Pacquiao used to throw more punches back then. Right? Abel Sanchez believes based on styles, Mayweather would have dominated back then. Pay attention to the purses. Mayweather was willing to take 50% back then. You know Floyd Mayweather is very interested in his legacy. So much so that he wears TBE hats, the best ever hats. Right? In interviews. Mayweather talks about the biggest names in boxing history. Sugar Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali, and Mayweather openly compares himself to them. Right? Why would Mayweather five years ago be prepared to risk his unbeaten streak, his legacy, on a 50% cut in a fight against Manny Pacquiao? Mayweather knew, in fact, we've seen that he can make millions fighting other guys. Why would he risk it all in fighting Manny Pacquiao? Right? Keep in mind, all he wanted was drug testing, a request that today is really standard protocol. Right? Nothing too extravagant. Understand the drug testing request would have been bilateral. He would have been tested for drugs, too. Why would Mayweather be prepared to take that risk? I believe it's because he sees the same things Abel Sanchez sees. Now, Sanchez still believes Mayweather wins the fight, but he believes Mayweather was slowed down a little bit. Are you certain that this Manny Pacquiao is the same Manny Pacquiao from 2008 and 2009? Is this the same Manny Pacquiao who beat Oscar De La Hoya? The guy who fought Oscar De La Hoya Right? He stops Oscar De La Hoya. Would Brandon Rios have gone the distance against him? Wasn't that Manny Pacquiao a guy knocking everyone out? I believe the fight before Oscar De La Hoya is Manny taking David Diaz's title at 135 pounds. Right? Destroyed him. Destroyed him. Wasn't that Manny Pacquiao a knockout puncher? Where have the knockouts been the last five years? Right? So I'm expecting Mayweather to win this fight. I'm expecting Pacquiao to come in light. Because I believe Pacquiao himself understands. His chances of knocking out Mayweather are slim. Especially since Pacquiao doesn't have the punch of a Marcus Maidana and is not going to weigh in the 160s like Maidana did against Mayweather. Right? So, if you're watching the weigh-in and you see that Mayweather is the physically bigger man by a few pounds, right? If you look at films of this fight and you realize that guys trying to jump in with a lot of volume, throwing a lot of punches on Floyd Mayweather, don't do that well. If you're looking at the Oscar De La Hoya Mayweather film, right? Oscar wins that fight on one judge's scorecard. And you're noticing that the key to Oscar's success in that fight is Oscar's left jab. Just ask yourself, is Manny's right jab, Manny's a southpaw. By the way, Oscar was a southpaw too, but fought inverted. If Manny Is Manny's right jab as good as Oscar's right jab? 
is Manny's inside game as good as Jose Luis Castillo's inside game? As good as Ricky Hatton's inside game? Haven't we seen Floyd solve the puzzle against fast-handed fighters like Zab Judah? I like Mayweather in this fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Certainly, win, lose, or draw, I'll be here online after the fight with some post-fight thoughts. Thanks for stopping by.